Guys, welcome back to the Daily Reviews. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for supporting me um, through these hard times. As you probably know, uh, my mum hasn't been too well. And uh, unfortunately, um, she passed away not too long ago. Um, a little bit of a shock, of course, um, to my life and to my family's life. But the journey continues. Um, so this week, we're back to the Daily Reviews. As I always say, guys, um, if you can just really support me in terms of if you enjoy the video, please like, subscribe and turn on notifications for any future videos I will be posting. So just uh, a little summary of what we're going to be going over today. Um, 10 pairs as usual. We'll be looking at New Zealand dollar USD, New Zealand dollar CAD, USD JPY, pound USD, gold, euro USD, USD CAD, USD Swiss franc. Aussie dollar USD and Euro Aussie dollar. So just to let you know, even though we have a few pairs that are pretty much correlating and negatively correlating, we're not really going to be focusing on that um, as of today. The weekly analysis is just to get an overview on where we could potentially see the market heading to over the next coming days. Now, of course, we'll be patiently waiting for our setups to come. And um, once we see those setups, then we'll uh, obviously look to take our trades. So without further ado, let's get started with New Zealand USD. So the first things that I'm going to be looking at when looking to analyze this pair is clearly the overall structure of this market. We can see that the structure of this market is down, um, but of course, and um, there's a few other things that we need to be looking at. Now, when looking at the structure, the first things that I look at is the overextension of this market. Looking to the left, we can see that there's not too much traffic there. And this is on a daily time frame. So what I've started to notice if we drop down to the four hour time frame is an overall structure where the market is stepping up, making structure higher lows. That's clearly indicated um, by uh, my drawings here, as you can see. And um, we see the extension of this market to the downside, which was clearly sell bias. We see this push to the upside. Now with this push to the upside, we can see that there's strong bullish pressure in the market. Clearly we're breaking previous structure highs to the left, making new higher highs. Now, we made a double top of the structure after this potential exhaustion to the downside. We would have liked to see this market push back to the upside, making a new higher high. But after the double top, you can see that we've had this rally back down. Now, with a double top, I'm looking for the market to continue pushing down to make lower highs for a further continuation of this overall structure to the left. However, what you started to see here is a structural higher low. Now, this is potentially indicating to us bullish pressure in this market. So the way I'll be looking at this is structural low, structural higher low, and then potentially to see this market now push back to the upside, making a higher high. Now, of course, I'll be patiently waiting to see how price starts to react in and around the 65, 58 level. If it starts to show signs of sell bias market, then we'll be looking at this as a potential triple top, looking at this as a first touch, second touch, and then a third touch. However, if this overall market structure is going to continue to push up after this push to the downside, then I'll be looking for this break of this structure, which will be a break of previous structure highs, retest, and then a continuation to the upside. Patience will be a virtue. As you can see, the range of these candles are pretty slim, uh, pretty small, shall I say. So what I'll be looking for is a potential push to the upside, potential push to the downside, and then the corrective, uh, and then a continuation move um, back to the upside. Um, for now, that's New Zealand USD, and we'll move over to our second pair. The second pair that we'll be looking at today is New Zealand, uh, New Zealand dollar CAD. Now, looking at the structure on the daily time frame, as you can clearly see, it's pretty similar to the New Zealand dollar USD. Now, again, what I'll be looking for is for this potential reversal in this market, the first things that I'm looking at is the overall structure, which was down, which was clearly sell bias. Now, when I'm looking for a continuation of a sell, I'm looking for a lower high structure to be formed, and then I'm looking to sell the structure back to the downside. However, when I look at this market, I can see it's overextended. So looking to the left, I don't see much traffic. And of course, I don't use indicators, but I can clearly see from a technical viewpoint that this market is overextended. So what I'd like to see now with, with this structure is our structural low, higher low, and then a potential continuation to the upside, making structural higher highs. Now, I don't want to get uh, into too much detail about the, uh, into too much details about this just yet. But what we can see is that this level here, just like on New Zealand dollar USD, around 88.38 is holding a strong resistance zone. So I'm not going to be tricked into any buyers as of yet, and I'm definitely not looking to sell this market. The reason being is because price has tapped into this a few times, and what I'm going to be looking at is how price reacts. Now, if this is our lower high structure of this overall structure, I'm looking for this market structure to continue pushing down. I don't really want to see price pulling back and tapping into it again. 
unless this is an area in the market where the orders need to be filled before the continuation. If this market is going to continue up, then a clear break of this structure, a retest of this structure, and then a continuation to the upside will be obviously clear for me uh, to look for buyers. However, if this doesn't happen, then what I'll do, you see how price starts to react in and around this level again, and then potentially wait for price to break these previous structural lows, violating the structure, and then looking for a potential lower high before I continue to sell this back to the downside. So that's how I see New Zealand dollar CAD, and for now, we'll move on. The third pair that I'd like to look at is USD JPY. Now, this structure is pretty interesting. As you can see, we've had this very strong push to the downside, clearly indicating some sort of sell pressure or economic news or whatever it may be, don't really care. Looking at the overall structure of this market, we can see previous structure lows being violated, lower highs being formed. We had a double bottom of this previous structure low, and then we've had this attempt by the bulls to push back to the upside. For a good five days, price failed to break and close above any of these previous structure highs. And as you can see, we've had this push to the upside, which more than likely would entice a lot of buyers into the market and this strong, uh, strong rally to the downside. So all I'm looking for clearly is for the market just to pull back, create some clear structure for me, um, either a lower high structure or a retest of this previous structure before we go back down to these major levels here around 107.54. Um, this structure has been taken here, which is the major structure low. So this will be the range that I'll be working with as of next week. And um, for buyers, I don't think I'll be looking for buyers on UJ anytime soon. Um, but for now, I'll just be looking to see how price starts to react around 109.12 and see if we can start to fill this range back to the downside around 107.54. So that's UJ and we'll move on to our fourth. A fourth pair we'd like to look at is pound USD. Now, with this structure, to be honest with you, I don't really like it. It doesn't tickle my fancy. And I can see that price for the last two days last week, Friday and Thursday, um, struggled to break this level around 25.81. Now, for me, this is not a buy zone. What I'm looking for price to do because of the overall momentum of this market is down, creating lower highs, double tops of these lower highs, and then a continued push to the downside. Now, even though we've tapped into this strong level on the market as a support zone, we are still breaking structural lower lows. Um, sorry, breaking structural lows, making new lower lows. So for buyers, what I'm going to wait for is for price to create new structural heights, which will be violating previous structures, potential pullbacks to make higher lows, and then continuations to the downside. Because I know this level here around 2581 is a strong support zone, for sales, I'm only going to be looking for price to come back to in and around these levels here uh, for a potential triple top, and then look to sell the market back to the downside. Or even better, I'm just going to be waiting for price to break the support zone to continue indicating to me that the uh, bears are in the market and uh, that we're potentially going to uh, continue this rally to the downside. It will look something like this. So that's my overall uh, bias on pound USD at this moment in time. Again, I think patience is a virtue with this one. Um, and as I said, for sales, triple top or whatever you want to call it around this level here or a clean break with a strong support zone and then a retest. Um, looking at the overall consensus of these candles, I think we'll be looking at the middle of next week for pound USD. So we'll move on to our next pair. So the next pair I'd like to look at this week is gold. Um, as you can clearly see, we had a very strong push to the upside by the bulls last week, closing fairly, fairly convincingly that they're in control of this market at the moment. Now with all, all the, um, uh, news that's happening in terms of the um, China wars and that a lot of money is going to be going into gold. Does that necessarily mean we're going to continue to push to the upside? Well, we really don't know. What we can see from a technical viewpoint is that this is a very strong resistance zone. We can see once price came back into this level, it attempted to break to the upside but failed. This does not mean we're not going to continue pushing up. However, what I'll be looking for is evidence to see if now price will start to range in and around this level before it decides to find a clear um, direction or bias or where it's going to go. Now, if this doesn't happen, then I'm not too worried about it. What I'll be waiting for, for continued buys and uh, uh, bullish pressure in this market, is a break to the upside of retest and then a continuation. If this doesn't happen, then I see with this range from these levels, these levels is fairly big. So all I'll be looking for here is for price just to indicate bullish pressure, show signs of a correction or pullback, and then I'll be looking for the continuation just to fill this range to the downside. So pretty simple analysis on this pair, um, not too much to uh, look at. And again, it's just a game of patience with this one. So we'll move on to our next pair. So the next pair we'd like to look at is Euro USD. And as you can clearly see, it's pretty similar to the gold pair that we was looking at. 
Um, we can see that price is overall down in terms of its structure, making structural lower lows, lower highs. We have tapped into the support zone on four occasions now, and we can see every time it has tapped into it, it has uh, reacted um, pretty strongly. The last time it tapped into it, we didn't quite make it back to the resistance level around 1260. So what I'll be looking for here is these levels around uh, what we've got here, 1214, to see if price starts to come back to these levels to react and see if sell sellers are still in the market and pushes back to the downside. If not, then I would patiently wait for price just to come back to these resistance zones and then potentially look for a short. Um, anything other than that, I don't think I'll be looking to trade this pair. If we do have a break of the structure, um, then obviously it will be very simple to see that the bears are in control. But what I'll be mindful of um, moving forward next week is potential fake outs because we see this as a consolidated market. So I don't really want to be trapped in this structure in terms of looking to sell this market. Then the market comes back into the structure and then continues up and then vice versa, a false break out of this structure and then a break back in retest before continuation to the downside. So that's Euro USD, and we'll move on to our next pair. So the next pair that we'll look at is USD CAD. Now, as you can clearly see with this market structure, it's not very clear in terms of whether we're buy bias or sell bias. We can see that the market is ranging in a sideways moving market, and this looks to me more like a potential accumulation stage or distribution stage in the market. Now, we're not sure if this market is going to continue push to the upside or to the downside, but what we do see is in and around these levels here, around 35.19, it's a very strong resistance zone. Likewise, down here around the 33.79 uh, region, it's a very strong support zone. So for me, what I'd like to see, again, we have the structure a lot, and especially last week we saw it. If we're going to continue to push to the downside to fill this range, then I want to see structure potentially breaking above starting to show signs of projection to indicate that there is potentially sell orders in and around these levels. What I'm then going to wait for is a break of the structure, a close above of this structure, a break below this structure, a retest of the structure, and then a continuation. Now, I know that may seem like a lot, but psychologically, that makes a lot of sense to me because I don't want to be in the breakout because I just don't like them. I don't want to be trapped into buys. What I want to see is a breakout, a break back in, an indication of sell pressure, and then a continuation to the downside. I already have my indication looking to the left that this is a very strong resistance zone in the market and sellers are attempting to push this market to the downside. Now, clearly, if this doesn't happen, then all I'll be looking for is to see price either break to the upside or to the downside, showing signs that buyers or sellers are in the market. And then, of course, I'll just be looking for the retest of this chart chart. Pretty simple. And again, just a little bit of patience to wait for this one to develop. Guys, I wouldn't sell this immediately as well. Just a warning to you. If this market was going to sell to the downside, then you have to ask yourself why we haven't reacted from it yet. Is this area in the market where the liquidity is at and now going to potentially go down? If that's the case, then there's no reason why you can't be patient just to wait for price to push, create a lower high before you sell this market down. Anytime you enter in a trade here, you can always lock it in at break even. You can hold it for as long as you want. Um, but I prefer to play safe than sorry. So that's USD CAD. We'll move on to our next. The next pair that we're going to be looking at is dollar Swiss franc. Now we can clearly see that Swiss franc is pretty much in control of this market at the moment. We can see our overall structure of this market was topping out around these levels here at 0218. We can see for at least a good two and a half weeks that price tried to attempt to break higher, make a new structure highs and failed to do so. We now had this strong rally to the downside, pulling back, making a new structure lower high. And then we continue to push back to the downside, violating previous structure, making new lower lows and lower highs. So for me personally, I'm sell bias on this market. What I'll be looking for is to see how price continues to pull back either for a double top of the structure and a continuation to the downside or simply forming a new clear lower low, lower high structure before I continue selling it to the downside. So for now, I'm sell bias. I won't be trapped into any, um, any buys and I guess... It's just a matter of waiting to see how price moves. So for now, if we have this continued sell bias to the downside, I'll be looking to target some of these structural levels down here as these major levels. So that's dollar Swiss franc. The next pair that I'd like to look at is Aussie dollar USD. Now we can clearly see a little bit of weakness in the dollar looking at the overall consensus of a few of these pairs that we've analyzed. That really doesn't mean anything with all the trade wars. So just be mindful. What I'll be looking at is for structure. 
So clearly identify this market is down. I clearly identify that price is failing to break the structure to the upside. If the bulls are going to take control of this market, I'm waiting for a break, retest, continuation of the structure to the upside. Pretty simple. And because of the range of this market, I don't think I'll be selling it from this resistance zone around 69.39. All I'll simply just be waiting for is price to react, show evidence that the bears are in control of this market. Then I'll be looking for a lower high structure and then a continuation sell to the downside. So for now, I won't be trapped into any buyers until I have confirmation and for sales and continuations. The only time I'll do this, and I'm not going to go into too much detail again, but we'll have a break, close above, break back in, retest, and then sell the market. And that will give me enough confidence that the sellers are still in control. But that's the overall analysis on Aussie dollar USD. The final pair that we look at today is Euro Aussie dollar. Looking to the left of this structure, price is starting to drop out around 62.47, indicating sell pressure in this market. We can see a very strong um, uh, extension of this market to the upside, potentially overbought, and what we can start to see now is sellers stepping into the market. Previous structure loads are being violated, prices closing below, attempting to push back to the upside and failing to do so. I'm not saying this is a sell zone, but this is an indication that sellers are potentially going to take over this market. We have enough canvas here to the right to fill and paint some candles on. So what I'll be looking for next week is a potential double top of the previous structure to indicate strong sell pressure, or I'm just looking for new structure to continue creating a clear lower low structure, retest of structure, and then a continuation to the downside. If you look at how many candles are here over the course of, so let's say three, three and a half weeks, when this market indicated it was making higher highs, higher lows, we had ample opportunities to enter the markets here. So me personally, there's no reason for me to rush into markets and look for sales here. I can wait patiently for the pullback, double tops, continuations, or continuations, exhaustions, lower high formations, and then continuations to the downside, okay? So that's your overall ana uh, analysis for this week. Um, fairly quick, fairly simple. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I wish you all a great trading week. Take care for now.